Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. Today we'll be discussing the top 10 mistakes the first Harry Potter film made that the new HBO Max show can fix. When the Philosopher's Stone movie came out in 2001, Harry Potter fans all over the world flocked to theatres to see their favourite boy wizard brought to life, and while the film truly was magical in its day, it made a fair amount of mistakes when compared to the novel. With so much detail to cram into a two and a half hour movie, it's completely understandable that certain aspects of the book were unable to make it into the film version of the Philosopher's Stone. But in addition to some of these omissions, there were also just other, well, mistakes. Today, I'll be taking you through 10 of the most obvious mistakes from the first Harry Potter film, which I believe the new reboot of the series can fix. 1. Harry's Eye Color Harry is described in the Philosopher's Stone as having his mother's bright green eyes, a detail which turned out to be actually quite a big focal point throughout the series due in large part to the fact that Severus Snape loved Harry's mother dearly and Harry's green eyes reminded him of her. So with so much description of and focus on the colour of Harry's eyes, it was rather surprising for fans when the Philosopher's Stone introduced Daniel Radcliffe, a decidedly blue-eyed boy as Harry Potter. Couldn't they have given him green contacts or something? Well, as it turns out, the filmmakers did try to use coloured contact lenses to correct this mistake, but unfortunately, the young actor was allergic to the coloured lenses and he was unable to wear them without incredible discomfort. In any case, fingers crossed, this should be an easy fix in the upcoming television series. 2. Wrong Snake at the Zoo This has got to be one of the most trivial mistakes in the entire movie series, but a mistake it still is. At the very beginning of The Philosopher's Stone, when Harry joins the Dursleys on Dudley's birthday trip to the zoo, the boys peer into a giant snake display. This is the scene in which Dudley pushes Harry out of the way, and Harry inadvertently makes the display glass disappear with his magic. The snake escapes, but not before thanking Harry in parcel tongue. Now, in the films, there's a small sign beside the snake's display indicating that it's a Burmese python, a species native to a large area of Southeast Asia. But in the books, the snake is actually a boa constrictor, a species native to South America. As I said, it's trivial, but it is a mistake. 3. Quirrell and Harry's Initial Meeting Accompanied by Hagrid on his way to Diagon Alley for the first time ever, Harry met a large number of witches and wizards as they passed through the Leaky Cauldron pub. Among them was the nervous and eccentric Professor Quirinus Quirrell. In the movie, we saw Quirrell effectively recoil upon the very sight of Harry during their first interaction, as he withheld his hand from shaking Harry's. Yet in the book, Quirrell enthusiastically shook Harry's hand like everyone else. I imagine this choice was made by the filmmakers in order to highlight the fact that later on in The Philosopher's Stone, Quirrell was unable to touch Harry's skin without incredible pain, but this was only after Voldemort fully possessed him. At this earlier point in the story, the Dark Lord had yet to take up residence on the backside of Quirrell's head, which means he should have been able to touch Harry, which of course, in the book, he did. 4. Ron's Personality If there is one mistake that I'm still upset about from the Harry Potter films, it would have to be the inaccurate way that Ron Weasley's character was represented. Ron's personality was absolutely destroyed in the movies, with the young wizard being essentially reduced to a walking punchline, and while Book Ron was funny and endearingly eager to prove himself, he was never overly goofy or foolish. So much of Ron's loyalty, wizarding street smarts and bravery, were completely omitted from the films, and it resulted in a version of the character that was quite simply inaccurate. In fact, some of his greatest lines and pieces of wisdom regarding wizarding culture were given to Hermione or others. In my opinion, this is a huge mistake that the show can fix. 5. Hermione's Appearance Played by Emma Watson, the movie version of Hermione was never going to be quite as plain as the books described. However, there were certain aspects of Miss Granger's physical appearance that the movies didn't accurately portray, but could have. For example, in the novel, Hermione is described as having rather large front teeth, that is, until they were eventually shrunk down in the Goblet of Fire. In the films, Emma had quite beautiful teeth throughout the entire series, which made for a rather poor unveiling of her makeover at the Triwizard Tournament's dance in the fourth movie, although that whole concept is a little dated now, so perhaps there won't be much emphasis on it in the show, but we'll get to all that in a later video. As it turns out, the filmmakers did try to start out Emma Watson with larger front teeth, but the actress, who was only 11 at the time of filming the first film, was understandably unable to speak very well while wearing the large fake teeth. 
In addition to her teeth, there's also Hermione's hair to consider, which in the books is described as brown and bushy. While Emma's hair began somewhat frizzy in the Philosopher's Stone, as the films progressed it became less and less so. When it comes to the new television series, these are simple mistakes that I hope will be more accurately represented. 6. Mispronunciation of Voldemort A completely fabricated moniker, Voldemort was created by Rowling for the Harry Potter series. She has said that her imagined etymology of the name is that of French origins, with vol meaning flight or theft, de meaning of or from, and mort meaning death. The mistake in the films is apparently in the way that the name is pronounced. Being that it is an invented French word, evidently the T at the end of Voldemort should be silent. Of course, once the Philosopher's Stone was shot and released with the actors pronouncing the T before this clarification was made, there was no going back. But this could be an easy fix for the new HBO show. I'm personally fine with the hard T, but I know that others are not. 7. The Sorting Ceremony Call it what you will, an omission or a mistake, the sorting ceremony in the Philosopher's Stone movie left much to be desired. In the movie, students are called up at random to be sorted into their house, rather than alphabetically as they are in the books. We also don't get to see the whole ceremony, which I personally felt was a mistake. Since the television show is likely to have much more screen time available to pay tribute to these more understated scenes, I hope that we'll get to see the ceremony in its entirety. 8. The Rules of Quidditch In the film Oliver Wood, Gryffindor captain in Harry's first year at Hogwarts, tells Harry that when the seeker catches the Golden Snitch, the game ends and that team wins. This is not technically correct. While the team who secures the Golden Snitch is more likely to win, they do not automatically take the game. In the books, the rules are more thoroughly explained. Harry learns that when a seeker catches the Golden Snitch, the game ends and they earn their team 150 points, which may or may not win them the match. For example, if the opposing team were leading the game 180 to 5 and Harry caught the snitch, the match would end and his team would lose 180 to 155. 9. The Mirror of Erised The Mirror of Erised is seen only once in the movie. A young Harry looks upon the glass and sees himself in the company of his parents, Lily and James Potter. In the books, Harry makes multiple trips to the mirror and sees his entire extended family reflected back at him. It's my opinion that without these multiple trips and additional figures represented in the mirror during the movie, there's a bit of a misrepresentation of what Harry and his deepest desires are. He clearly feels so transfixed by the idea of having an extended family of relatives who understand him, love him, and support him, the opposite of the Dursleys. I hope the show takes more time to accurately portray these scenes. 10. Norbert Ah, uh, Hagrid's Dragon The final mistake that I'll be covering in today's video from the Philosopher's Stone is about Hagrid's pet dragon, Norbert, or Norberta to be exact. In the book, Hagrid and the trio go to great lengths to safely get Norbert off the grounds of Hogwarts, meeting Ron's older brother, Charlie Weasley, atop the castle's astronomy tower. Charlie then discovers that Norbert is in fact a female dragon, leading to her name change of Norberta. Norberta leaves with Charlie to Romania, where she can be safely cared for among her own kind. The movie cut most of this and gave a completely different explanation of where Norbert, never revealed as Norberta, had gone. Hagrid vaguely explains away the dragon's absence by saying that he was sent away to Romania after other Hogwarts star found out about him. I think it would be rather fun to correct this mistake. Audiences would get to meet Charlie, who actually never appeared in the movies, and we'd get to see more of a dragon. Win-win. And with that, we've come to the end of another video. What did you think? Did I miss any mistakes from the first film that you'd like to see the show fix? Please share your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, remember, it does not do to dwell on dreams and forget to live.